Well, hello, everybody. Hi. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brandon Walton, the managing editor here at Texas Scorecard, coming to you live from Houston at the Republican Party of Texas Convention, where right now I've got former state senator Don Huffines. We're going to be talking about a new initiative uh, that he is launching uh, in just a few moments. But first, thank you so much, Don, for joining us today. And, uh, you know, the first reaction I think I have, right, you're looking around at the convention hall, the exhibit hall here, is that there really does seem to be a lot of energy and enthusiasm from the grassroots uh, that are, are, seem to be really excited to be here at the Republican Convention, no? Absolutely, Brandon. They really are. Tremendous excitement. And they should be excited. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a great year for Republicans, not only in Texas, but across the nation. Mm -hmm. Now, you, of course, uh, ran uh, ran a gubernatorial campaign. Can't say the word. Uh, Gubernatorial campaign earlier this year. Uh, What have you done since, since the primary election? Well, this week we uh, are announcing a new initiative. Uh I am. It's called the Huffines Liberty Foundation. And it's very exciting. It's a C3. And our goal and our mission is to educate Texans about liberty and freedom and to help them hold their elected officers, uh, elected officials accountable to liberty and freedom. What kind of things can people expect to see out of the, the foundation? I mean, I see already on the signage, right, uh, sponsoring the Republican convention here. Um, I'll note that, you know, we had at TexasScorecard.com, even the governor, right, has not, has not sponsored it, the convention. But you've got Huffines Liberty Foundation right there on the sponsor list. So, OK, sponsoring things like the Republican convention. Uh, what, what else can we expect to see? Well, we're going we're gonna to do a lot of things. Excuse me. We're going to do a lot. Anything we can and need to do to educate Texans about freedom and liberty. We've got the answers. The Republican Party has the answers. I mean, just look at our platform, for instance. I love our party platform. Over 300 planks, and that's mainly what we're going to be doing at this convention is uh, formalizing that, and everybody's going to get to vote on that. But it's got the answers to the issues that affect all Texans, not just Republicans. Uh-huh. And we're going to be... Uh, having seminars, we're going to be doing media, we're going to be doing op-eds, we're going to be doing emails, newsletters, everything we can to promote not just the platform but the solutions to the issues. Do you think there's a difference? I think there was a lot of frustration with grassroots conservatives over the last several years where they've come to the Republican convention, maybe they've, they've taken part in crafting the priorities, crafting the platform, and then you fast forward through the legislative sessions and they're frustrated that they don't see the Republican lawmakers that they're electing actually putting those through. Do you think there's a, a little bit of a shift right now in, in activists and saying, OK, we're going to hold people accountable? Absolutely, there is. There's a great shift right now. And I think our, a lot of our elected Republicans are scared. They understand that the narrative is shifted. It shifted to the fact that the party platform clearly defines who we are as Texas Republicans, and it clearly defines what Republicans in Texas want to see into law. And I think the more we broadcast that out there and hold them accountable, the more you're going to see it. We don't look, we don't do this for fun. I mean, it is fun, but we're doing it for a very specific reason. We want these legislative priorities to be law. And we are the base of the party. We are the foundation of the Republican Party. So, uh, and, and these are common sense solutions put together by thousands, tens of thousands of Republicans in our platform. And there is a huge disconnect, and it has been for a long time. Our party, unfortunately, has been run by Republicans that don't necessarily believe in our platform. Mm-hmm. And, and they just don't. And I always put this out there when I was campaigning. I mean, if 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 someone is a Republican and calls himself a Republican and they don't agree with half of the platform or three quarters of the platform, what are they? Are they really a Republican? I mean, I've got Democrats that agree with 25 or 30 percent of our platform, but they're Democrats. So it's, it's really a scary situation where we've got elect, our elected office holders in the Republican Party that don't agree with what the Republicans really want. Well, and, and you have some firsthand insight that, that most people don't get, right, from your time serving yeah. in the Texas Senate. How did lawmakers, you know, when you brought up maybe the party platform, the party priorities, what, what kind of reaction did it normally get? Well, I can tell you this. I was in the Texas Senate for four years from the 84th to 85th sessions, 80, 84 to to 19 and not once not once in our republican caucus meetings that we had every single week during session did they ever mention the republican party platform 
And if I bring it up, I was immediately shouted down. There was made, they made fun of it. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm just telling you the truth. They didn't, they didn't care about it and they make fun of it. And uh, that's, that is a Republican elected office holders in the Texas Senate when I was there. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that, what are people who want to be active in getting this and getting these priorities across, right? Once the convention's done, right? The convention ends uh, on Saturday, um, but then we've got the November elections, and then in January, you've got the state legislature returning. You know, it's often been said the work's not finished when we're done here at the Republican Party convention. What, what are the next tasks that you think activists need to be taking? Well, they need to, of course, do everything they can to bring up the platform to their elected office holders. And I always pointed this out. Get your state rep or your senator a copy of the platform. Ask them to point to two issues out of 300. It doesn't seem hard. And, and then ask them to carry specifically a piece of legislation to bring that into law. And the reason I say that, because if they're going to pick out two, that means they probably have to read all 300. And they'll pick out the two that are the easiest to get done because they don't like controversy. But at least you might think they read it. But what they can do is also tune into the Huffines Liberty Foundation because we'll be advising all the grassroots what to do. We'll, be, we'll know what to do when the legislation's coming up. And we have the solutions. I mean, we're going to come out with great policy solutions. For instance, property tax. Uh -huh. uh, as you know, I campaign hard on that. We've got a comprehensive solution to completely eliminate property tax across the state of Texas, of Texas and it takes about a decade. But this, it can be done, and don't listen to the lies that it can't be done, because they are lies. This is very achievable. Yeah, well, and specifically when you look at eliminating the property tax, I mean, as you know, Republican voters overwhelmingly voted in the March primary uh, on those ballot propositions to say that that's something yes. they wanted. I know that that's something that the Legislative Priorities Committee uh, right now is, is looking at, could potentially be a legislative priority of the Republican Party of Texas. If you're just tuning in right now on Facebook, uh, we're here with former State Senator Don Huffines talking about what's happening here at the Texas Republican <laughs> Party Convention and the new Huffines Liberty Foundation. Um, earlier uh, at the opening, kind of the opening uh, session um, uh, of, the, of the convention over there, uh, the chairman, Matt Rinaldi, said he predicted a, a big red wave uh, this November uh, in no small part due to what we're seeing from the national level, right, for, from President Joe Biden and some of the backlash from his policies. Uh, do, you see, do you see that happening in Texas? I, I do. I think it's going to be a good year for Republicans in Texas. I really do. I think uh, uh, people are tired of, of the liberals, the left, and they understand where they're coming from. I mean, they're trying to – they've done a great job. I mean, look, the left's done a great job of, of changing our culture. They've done a good job of stealing the narrative from us with their language and everything else. And, uh, but they are communists, essentially. They're socialists. And, you know, socialism always leads to communism and tyranny. And I think a lot of Republicans are now really engaged and they're going to wake up. And I think that the, a lot of the independents are, too. What do you think about, uh, you know, a number of people have said to us they're excited to see that this convention is actually happening in person. Because two years ago, of course, there was the virtual convention. How important are events like this? Uh, for, for networking and for grassroots to ultimately kind of be able to get together and push those priorities across later? Well, that's a good question. I think these are very important. No. As everyone probably knows, this is the largest political convention really in the world, not just in the United States, but in the world. I think the communists in China have one bigger, but they, they probably shoot you if you go to that one. <laughs> Don't go, you know. But uh, So this is a great event. And, and Chairman Rinaldi is doing a tremendous job in putting this on is, and uh, raising money for the party. I think mean, we've got more money now coming in than we've ever had, even though we don't have the support of the governor uh, uh, really for this convention, which is sad, but it's telling. Uh, but this is going to be a great convention. It's super important that everybody gets together and can visit and share ideas, and that's what we're doing. Excellent, excellent. Uh, last question. So Huffines Liberty Foundation is launching launching this week. We're going to see even more stuff coming out of it. Where can people go to follow uh, what's coming out of the foundation? 
where we're going to we're creating of course our website and uh, a lot of people involved in in the campaign will be getting those emails but if you're not on our email list i suggest you that you can go to donhuffines.com and sign up you can also uh, google huffines liberty foundation we're actually going to have an event today here today's thursday yep. at the convention from four to six at the light ha- lake house restaurant which is right outside the front door <laughs> i know it's going to be crowded but uh we, we did expand the capacity. It's all free, and there's free beer and wine and, and beverages and right. just everybody to have some fun. Excellent. Well, yeah, if you heard that, I guess you got, you got the invitation out. You're putting the open invitation out. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you again so much, Don. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We're going to continue to have conversations uh, right here live from the Republican Party of Texas Convention. So stay tuned on our Facebook page and check out our coverage at TexasScorecard.com.